I was in a mountainous recreation area, well after dark, by myself, with no flashlight or camping equipment. I had planned on meditating and fasting all night. At about 10 p.m., I decided that I was hungry, and I started walking down off the ridge that I was on. All of a sudden, there's something big in the darkness. I hear its footsteps in the grass. It sounds very heavy and very large. I got really scared and I started talking to it, pleading it to leave me alone, that I was just going down the hill and that I just wanted to pass and I didn't want any trouble. I started singing some kind of song and I found two rocks and started banging them together. I made it past the place that I last heard it moving, which was only about 14 feet from me. I heard it shift its weight. It was still there, but it didn't walk. The comforting part was that it wasn't moving toward me. The scary part was that all my forceful talking and shouting and noise making hadn't scared it at all. I had to stay close to its position because I was on a steep ridge. Something that wasn't afraid of me out there could only have been a bear or something paranormal. The last I checked, bears don't exactly understand human language and don't negotiate with you if you ask them to let you pass. I don't know. I banged the rocks together all the way down the hill so it could hear me moving away. I'm not really sure what this was. And sometimes I think that I'm just fine, never knowing. I managed a resort in the Adirondack for several years. The place is old and rustic. It's miles from civilization and very peaceful. It was built in the 20s and had somewhat of a sordid past. It was built for a Canadian senator who would run rum down from Canada during the prohibition. We still had the underground locked safe room where he would store the booze, as well as hidden booze hiding areas underneath some of the cabins. Calvin Coolidge stayed at a camp across the pond during his presidency and would visit my camp, for the spirits, I'm sure. Anyway, I met a girl and decided to sleep out under the stars on the camp's peninsula. It started to rain, so I suggested we sleep on the screened-in porch of the boathouse, which I thought was a pretty good compromise. So, after we were all set up, it was getting pretty late, about 1.30 in the morning or so, we were laying there and I was all tossing and turning because I'd been asleep and woken up. So I have a hard time falling asleep after stuff like that. We'd been laying there for about a half an hour or so when I hear the bathroom door open in the boathouse. It couldn't have been anything else but that door. I did all the maintenance on those old buildings and oiling that particular door was on my work list for the next day. I knew exactly what it sounded like. My first thought was that it was my boss, the owner of the camp. She is notoriously nosy and has been known to spy on the staff in their staff quarters. So she was my first logical thought as to who had made the noise. Why she would have been hiding out in the men's bathroom in the boathouse for over an hour is beyond my comprehension. I proceed to hear footsteps walking across the boathouse, down the three steps onto the dance floor, and stopping right in front of the door to the screened-in porch. I lay there, just waiting for the door to open and for my boss to call my name. As the minutes stretched out, I started praying that she would open the door, walk away, sneeze, dance the funky chicken, anything but there was nothing. The rest of the night I stayed up, stiff straight in my sleeping bag. No receding footsteps, no door noises, no nothing. Just my girlfriend, myself, the night, and an empty boathouse. 
The next morning, my girlfriend, she wasn't at the time, but she was the four years that followed, rolled over to me and immediately asked me about the footsteps the night before. She had also stayed up all night, waiting for some other sound to explain those footsteps in the night, and heard nothing. She was terrified. We never went into that boathouse again. I unfortunately had to go to the boathouse myself on a daily basis. Everything was cool during the day. At night, I had to turn all the lights in the camp off. This is something I've done every night for the past three years. However, ever since that, there was always a sense of dread going in there, being alone in the dark in the boathouse. The worst part is that there's this enormous hanging bed in there in front of the fireplace. It was for the former camp owners to take naps on during the day, hung on chains, so that the bed could be lifted out of the way for entertaining guests in the evening. Every single night, that bed was swinging. A 175 pound bed swinging on its chains in the darkness of the boathouse. Until my last day at that camp, if I went in at night, that bed was swinging. For my lady's birthday, I took her to Gatlinburg, a popular, touristy, one main boardwalk town in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. We camped the first night, a few miles out in the woods at a popular location, Elkmet Campground. The campground was beautiful, tall green trees like baby redwoods, a clear water river scattered by checkered rocks, families with little ones running around, it was great. Through borrowing a tent, we found that we had no steaks and headed into town for supplies, whiskey, and hot dogs. It was dusk by the time we made it back to the campground. Most campers were surrounding their dissipating fires or cleaning up before the quickly coming night. Our tent was still up, but crunched up a little without the steaks allowing it to spread open as widely as it could. We fixed our tent and started a fire. As our night progressed, we found ourselves surrounding our campfire two to three hours later around midnight. Now, this was a sort of campground where another campsite is just 30 yards from yours. Bears frequent the area, and my girlfriend was already freaking out a little bit, which is why I booked our site in the dead center of the whole campground. All the other campers had gone to bed at this point, and the only sound we could hear was the slowly crackling fire and the light stream of the river flowing into the rocks. The clouds were covering a crescent moon, so there wasn't much light to begin with. We had flashlights, and I would occasionally shine the light around us while avoiding hitting the other campers to confirm that we were fine and that there were no bears. Seemingly out of nowhere, from the campsite behind my girlfriend and to my left, a light shined directly on us and then all around in a frantic yet focused manner, kind of like the Eye of Sauron. I saw what appeared to be a man with the strangest gait I've ever seen. He wore a headlight and was focused on his picnic table. The man's gait seemed to me to be a little bit like Jar Jar Binks, just not normal. I could see through my periphery that the man focused his light on the picnic table, and whenever I turned my head toward him, immediately his light would hit my girlfriend and I. I could only see the outline of the man through the light of his headlight and the occasional flash of my light at his campsite once he continued to flash his light at ours in a very disconcerting way. This was the campsite across from us, where we saw no one at all the night prior. I could only see the outline of his body as all black, as if he was in an all black bodysuit. His movements were eerily repetitious. For what went on to close to an hour, this man would shine his headlight on his picnic table, make limited motions with his hands, if any at all, then walk five steps back to his tent, shine his headlight at his tent, then walk back to the picnic table, shine his light at us, and repeat it all over again. If this was just the man looking for something, he was on a cocktail of drugs. 
Once his light was on us for too long for comfort, I shined my flashlight on him for an extended period of time. It was at this moment when I went from annoyed to fight or flight. A chill ran down my back as I saw the outline of the man disappear in front of me and the light from his headlight bounce down to the ground, then fly across the ground from his campsite. It seemed to jump along the ground and into the bushes diagonally from both of our campsites. It wasn't like the headlight had been thrown, but as if it ran across the ground, like if it was on the head of a dog. I took my flashlight away and watched his light slowly come back out of the bushes and climb back up to the height of a person. The shadow figure returned back, walking out of the bushes and back to the campsite to continue the same odd behavior. There were no sounds at all coming from this figure throughout the entirety of the night. Sometime later, we went into the tent for shut-eye, and the shadow man figure was still at his odd routine. The following day, the tent from the shadow man's campsite was gone, like no one had ever been there. I then found out that just a mile from our campsite was a small town called Elkmont Ghost Town, with abandoned buildings and a cemetery up a trail a bit. I couldn't find any other stories of Elkmont mysteries, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are other stories involving the Headlight Man. One time, about two or three years ago, I was out in the woods camping with my brother. We had just gotten there at about 4 p.m. to set up and everything like that. Once we had everything set up, we got a fire going. I told my brother that I was going to go get some firewood because we really only had enough to start the fire. It was about seven o'clock and then I suddenly got really cold even though the weather wasn't cold at all. When I got this sudden rush of coldness, I felt a heavy feeling of just pure evil and hatred and despair. I immediately went back to my brother. He told me that it was fine and that there was probably just a strong thing of wind that made me cold, but I knew something was wrong. We sat around the fire and I just felt like someone or something was watching me. Once again, I started to feel that same feeling of pure evil. It started to get worse and worse, kind of like it was growing inside me, but I tried to brush it off and I just went to bed. At around 2.20 in the morning, I heard something that sounded like a scream and it woke me up. I looked around in the tent and got a flashlight. When I turned the light on, I noticed that my arm was bleeding and had been cut open by something in multiple spots. I woke my brother up in a panic and told him what had happened. He said that he didn't know what I was talking about and that my arm wasn't even cut, even though I was looking right at it and it was obviously cut open and bleeding. I was like, are you joking? He continued to say that nothing happened to me and, kind of irritated, said that I was pranking him. At around that time, I felt a huge amount of pain in my arm and then I heard the scream again. But it didn't sound like how a human screams. It was more of a screech, as though there was some kind of animal or some creature in the distance that was in pain. I looked at my brother and asked if he had heard it and he said, what do you mean? I didn't hear anything. Nothing happened. At that point, I was scared for my life. I mean, if it was an animal, he would have heard it too. I was just praying that nothing more would happen. After a few minutes, I heard the scream again. Every time that thing screamed, I would get that feeling again, and my arm would start to burn. Eventually, all of it stopped. After that, I wasn't able to sleep for the rest of the night. The next morning, I told my brother that I just wanted to leave right away. When we got into the truck, I could have sworn that out of the corner of my eye, I saw something run through the woods. 
We got to the truck and I looked to the right while packing the stuff up and four of the trees had marks like they'd been clawed by something. The thing is, the marks were at least 12 feet up in the trees, maybe higher. At that point, I was tired and scared, so I just got in the truck and we left. To this day, I still haven't gone camping again, and I still wonder what that was. This happened in 2018, in December, just before Christmas. Two of my friends and I, we were 17 at the time, and a cousin of mine who was 15, were camping in the woods. It was on the property of one of the friends that had come along. We were there for five days and pretty much did it all by ourselves, except for water. That we would hike back to the house to grab for the day since it was pretty impractical to get water ourselves for five days. This region was relatively dry, with no water filters or anything like that. We'd lie down pretty early, which felt rather primitive, literally when the sun set. Every night we would hear boar around our tent and steps. Paranoia fueled it a lot, but we had a bow, two axes, and some big knives. One day though, and I think this was either the last night or the second to last, we were just having a chat after dinner, like we would often do, and we hear a scream. It was pretty odd. It didn't sound human, but I have no clue what animal would be doing it either. I know a fair amount of our country's fauna. I've heard a lot of their screams, but this one was just different. The scream sounded like it had a buildup, not like a scream where you immediately hear the loudest part and then it dies off, but like it started low, got really intense, and then stopped. It sounded far enough, say 50 to 70 meters or so, but then it happens again, and again, and again. Now, suddenly, it's coming from almost all sides, and it was getting pretty close. It didn't sound super menacing, even though we were really scared, shooting my air gun with no rounds just to make a sound. It got to the point where the sound seemed like it was coming right to where the campfire couldn't shed light, just outside of what we could see. I remember that we had set up some traps for rabbits down the trail that day, so we gathered all the strength and courage that we could and we went there. The bait was gone, but the traps were unarmed. And that was a stupid idea anyway. Rabbits don't scream like that. We had some pretty strong flashlights, but we couldn't see a thing. All of a sudden, the sounds just stopped with no clear reason. It was the most terrifying experience I've ever had. And anytime somebody asks me for a scary story, I share this one. Also, where I live in Portugal, we don't have any cougars or anything like that that typically screams. Maybe there's no explanation. I don't know. But all I know is that it terrified me, and I still think about it to this day. In the early 90s, my parents sent me to a YMCA summer camp in the New Jersey Pine Barrens. It was called something like Matalonike, and it was located on the shores of a series of man-made lakes and Medford Lakes, so not exactly backwoods. We all knew the stories of the Jersey Devil, but the camp had a few of its own ghost stories. The White Lady, said to have jumped off a bridge on her wedding day, and Hatchet Harry, an axe-wielding maniac who got kids that wandered into the woods. I assumed both of these stories were developed to keep kids from wandering off. What I encountered was neither of those. I woke up in the middle of the night in my bunk, hearing some rustling in the bushes. The cabins were basically a half wall with screened windows all around, save for the back wall, 
with eight bunk beds, four on each side. You could lay in your bunk and look right out the windows. It really sucked, though, when it rained because there were no shutters to close. I had heard this rustling, so I grabbed my flashlight and I shined it into the bushes from across the front of the cabin, sweeping from bottom to top. There was nothing else in that direction save for woods, as our cabin group was right on the edge of the camp. I didn't see anything out there, so I put my flashlight back, but kept it next to me and got ready to settle back in. But then this light reappeared. It was this bluish white light and flickered slightly, kind of like a firefly. The light slowly followed the same path that my flashlight had traced, from bottom to top, and then it disappeared. It scared the hell out of me, but I didn't bother to wake my grouchy counselor. She wouldn't have believed me anyway, since she already thought that I was just a troublemaker. So I just smushed down into my sleeping bag and tried to get back to sleep. I never saw it again after that point. My best guess is some sort of firefly that thought my flashlight was a prospective mate, although the fireflies in that area usually had a greenish hue. I've shared this story before, but I've never really gotten a satisfactory response. Maybe I'll never know what that was, and maybe it was something totally natural, but I still thought it was really freaky. A few years back, I went camping with two buddies in the mountains near Lake Tahoe. We hiked about two hours with our packs to a small lake and set up camp. All was normal during the day. We made some hot dogs and beans and then stayed up until it was dark to watch the stars. Once it was dark out, we hiked up to the top of a large boulder to get a vantage point to see the stars over the trees. I recall that there was no moon out that night because we could see the stars so clearly due to the limited ambient light. We were pretty far out there, so there was no background noise or light from humans. Once our eyes adjusted after a half an hour or so, we could see all of the stars and even some satellites slowly moving in the sky. After we're done stargazing, we head down to our tents that were set up right by the lake. We have two two-person tents for the three of us. My two friends shared one tent and I was alone in the other. We set up the tents right next to each other on the same flat spot. I fall asleep pretty easily because I was tired from hiking and exploring all day and because it was so dark out and I like sleeping in the dark. However, at about three or four in the morning, I wake up to a rustling on the outside of my tent. In my half-asleep days, I'm not sure if it's just wind or something else. I keep listening, and I realize that it's something brushing against my tent. It sounds like an animal pushing its nose against the tent fabric and sniffing. The sound is coming from the side of the tent, right next to my head so I can hear it super clearly. At this point, my heart is racing and I'm lying frozen in my sleeping bag, hoping that whatever is outside will leave my tent and it'll just be over. I think about calling out to my friends in their tent, but I don't want to startle or anger whatever is outside. So I decide to just keep lying still and hope it will leave. My mind is going through every possibility when I finally realize what it is. When we had set up our tents earlier that day, there wasn't much flat space, so we placed our tents very close to each other, like I said. Evidently, they were so close that when my friend was moving his feet in his sleeping bag, they brushed up against his tent, which was right near my head. So all along, it was my friend's feet moving around, and there was no animal or person outside. Phew. However, that wasn't the end of the weird stuff. 
and I only realized that this next part was weird once we had left the next day and I got home. As I laid in my tent and tried to slow my heart after realizing that the rustling was my friend, I was looking at the shadows of the trees on the wall of my tent. They reminded me of when I was a kid, when a car would slowly drive down your street and the headlights through the blinds would cast shadows that slowly draw across the ceiling. At the time, it made sense to me, and I thought it was just like when I was a kid. Considering that I had just thought a creature was outside my tent, this seemed like nothing. However, as I mentioned earlier, it was a moonless, pitch-dark night. So what could that light have been? It was a very slow-drawing light that had the shadows of the trees moving across my tent walls for about five minutes. We were very far from civilization, so there's no way that it was a car or a flashlight from a midnight hiker, because the light was so steady and slow moving. I don't know if it was a flare or a comet streaking across the dark sky or something else. I still don't know what it could have been, and I think maybe I'm okay with that. I've never really had any paranormal experiences before, but I cannot explain this. I'm in college, and about seven other people and I from my school went on a backpacking trip. We had two experienced leaders. We drove to Zaleski State Forest, which is in the Appalachian region of Ohio. It was early April this year, and it was cold. Everything was still dead from winter. After hiking miles into the forest, we set up camp at the backpacking campsite. There were a couple of other groups of people as well. A few of them were friendly older couples and then two college-aged girls. Everyone was pretty spread out from each other. We set up camp farther away from everyone else. I've always been able to sense energies of places and the energy in this place wasn't great. It was almost spooky. Each of us had individual one-person tents, and we formed a kind of cluster in this site, with my tent being in the back, so no one was behind me. Our cluster was also right next to the forest, because this backpacking site was like a big cleared off square in the middle of the trees. Fast forward, I'm dead asleep around 2 a.m., and I wake up to leaves crunching right by my tent. I hear footsteps, walking in circles around my tent. They had a sort of heaviness to them that couldn't be a deer or a dog. Also, it sounded like it was bipedal. I could not make this up. This creature or thing was circling my tent for a long period of time, slowly creeping up to the sides of the tent and then just stopping for periods of time that seemed like forever. Then it would move on, walking around the rest of our tent cluster. I could hear a human-like breathing from the mouth whenever it was close to my tent, like a sort of light heaving. I was shaking, too scared to unzip my tent and investigate. I kid you not, this went on for hours, and it seemed to me like I was the only one awake. Out of nowhere, I see an illuminated light shape from my tent, although I couldn't tell what it was from inside my tent because it was all zipped up. It was like a warm glow and it didn't move, kind of like a flashlight would if you were holding it still. I was paralyzed in fear. I simply couldn't believe that it was an animal. At some point, probably due to sheer exhaustion, I fell asleep but I could hear the heavy footsteps circling right up until the point that I did. In the morning, I questioned my fellow campers about it, and my leader admitted that she had heard the footsteps and the noises as well, admitting that it was bizarre and that she would have investigated had she not been so groggy. One of the boys in the group said that he also noticed the light that came on, but thought that it was someone else. 
Not a single person in the group had gotten up to go to the bathroom or turned on a light that night. I've heard things about the Appalachian region being creepy and bizarre, and now I believe it. Some people on Reddit have leaned toward Bigfoot, because apparently he's associated with light orbs. I've never really been a Bigfoot believer, but I'm telling you, this didn't feel like just any animal, or person, or anything I've ever experienced before. So maybe Bigfoot is as good an explanation as any. Okay, so I had this experience a long time ago, and it's been something that has driven me crazy ever since. I need to know if this has happened to anyone else, or if anybody knows what it might be. I believe in the paranormal, but I had never heard of anything like this happening to anyone else. So here goes. When I was 10, I was at a friend's house for her birthday party. It was Friday the 13th, but nobody was really that aware of it. Like nobody thought of the date or anything. Anyway, it was a camp out in her backyard which is basically in the middle of the woods. When it comes time to go into the tent and sleep, most of the other girls decide that they would rather sleep inside. Except for me and one other girl, we decided that we wanted to sleep in the tent outside. So the rest of them all slept inside while this other girl and I were outside. The birthday girl's dad slept in a separate tent right next to ours. The girl and I were talking and then, for some random reason, I asked her what the date was. She said, oh, it's Friday the 13th. We both kind of paused for a minute, thinking it over. And we both just kind of said, whatever, that's just a myth. Remember, we were still young, so while we had heard that Friday the 13th was bad luck and stuff like that, we hadn't really seen any scary movies, and we weren't informed about all the bad things that happened on that day. To us, it was a campfire story. Anyway, we don't give it another thought, and eventually, we go to sleep. This is when things took a turn. I am a very heavy sleeper, but I was woken up in the middle of the night. I have no idea what time it was. We didn't have cell phones yet, but I think it was somewhere between midnight and 3 a.m. I woke up because I heard this deep, menacing laughter it honestly sounded evil. I sat up and it immediately stopped. I thought I must have just been dreaming, so I went to go lay back down. As soon as my head hits the pillow, it starts again. It's an extremely low man's voice, just going, ha ha ha. I wake up my friend from her deep sleep and ask her if she's hearing it. She sleepily says no. She said she didn't hear anything and she fell right back asleep. I brushed it off once again and once again I tried to go back to sleep. But as soon as I laid my head on the pillow, it started up. I noticed that every time I heard it, it got louder, as if it was getting closer. I tried one more time to go back to sleep, but this time it was so loud it sounded like it was 10 feet away. At this point, I wake up the girl and tell her we're going inside. She's tired, so she said she's going to stay out there. I wake up my friend's dad from his tent next to ours, and I tell him that I want to go inside. He woke up and escorted me inside where I was finally able to fall back asleep. I tell everyone the next day what happened, and they all tell me that I'm crazy. But when I talk to the other girl who was in the tent... She tells me that after I left, she started hearing it too, and that she would swear by it. Whenever I tell people this story, the first thing they say is that it was the dad messing with us, but I'm certain that it wasn't. I knew this guy very well, and he just isn't that type of guy. He's very plain and very quiet. I had known him a long time, and I've never seen him act differently. The other reason I know that it's not him is because the entire time it was going on, I could hear him snoring from his tent. So, 
it definitely wasn't him. I've never been able to get that evil laughter out of my head. Ever since that day, I've been afraid of the dark, and I've always felt like something is watching me. I suffer from sleep paralysis from time to time now, and whenever I do, I hear the laugh. This was 10 years ago, and it still haunts me. When I was in northern Nova Scotia this last year while camping and fishing, I saw these odd shadow figures in the treetops. Everything was proportional about them, except for their arms. They were just way too long. They appeared just after dusk, and they never came near to the ground. They didn't necessarily feel malicious. It just felt bad like I shouldn't do anything that could draw their attention, or else it would have gone badly. Nothing of note happened other than them being there, but I'd never heard of anything like it before. Is anyone aware of any legends or anything describing shadow figures and treetops? I'd love to even have a name for these things, because to this day, I still have no idea what I saw. A couple of years ago, my brother bought a large piece of land out in the middle of nowhere, about 30 miles or so from cell phone reception. It's quiet. There's no light pollution, no paved roads, and not a lot of people around. Shortly after he bought the place, two of my brothers, the landowner and another, myself and our families, spent a weekend camping on the land and doing our best to clean it up. People had used it as a dump. There were many downed trees and stuff like that. On the second night that we camped there, I woke up in the middle of the night to relieve myself. As I was walking to the bushes in the dark, I realized that I could faintly hear music. This didn't really strike me as odd because I knew my brother had a radio in his camper. I finished up and went back to sleep with no further thought on the matter. The next morning at breakfast, I mentioned the radio and the music. Several other people recalled waking in the night and hearing music. But here's the kicker. No two people heard the same music. Finally, the brother who had brought the radio woke up. I asked him about the music, and he seemed a bit freaked out. He said that he woke up sometime during the night and went outside to smoke. He had heard music as well, and had assumed that it was someone else. I should mention, though, that he was the only one with a generator and a radio. If it wasn't his radio we heard, it wasn't anyone else's either. I've been back several times, but I'm a bit freaked out by that place at night. I have fun while I'm there, but I'm almost always armed, and I don't sleep in a tent anymore. I sleep in my SUV with the doors locked. It might seem kind of dumb, but realizing that everybody heard different music when there were no people, no functional radios that were on, and no electricity is quite creepy. When I, was, when I was around five, I went camping with my parents in a place called Bear Creek Reservoir in BC. It's a very isolated place, deep in the woods. We got there by driving up an old logging road. The actual reservoir itself was very beautiful and quiet. I actually looked up the area on Google Maps and it still gives me chills, even looking at it from a satellite perspective. But anyway, the day passed by without incident, and we mostly just swam the whole day. We went to bed that night, and nothing unusual had happened. But the following morning, I woke up in my parents' tent just as the sun was making its appearance. 
I unzipped the tent and noticed a figure standing maybe 50 feet away. The light was still fairly dim, so it was hard to make out distinct details, but it was just standing there, staring at me, unmoving. The entity had the figure of a woman of average size, but instead of seeing a face, there was just darkness. Even so, I could tell that it was looking at me. And instead of clothes and skin, it had leaves and sticks, as if it was made from them. I remember feeling very afraid of this creature, like if I left the tent, I wouldn't be seen again kind of fear. So I tried waking up my parents, and they were both really pissed that I woke them up, and they didn't believe me at all, until they finally got up later and explored the area. We ended up finding a bunch of man-made structures made of branches and other weird stuff in the area, but not one where I had seen it, so I don't know. Anyway, that's my true story. Let me know what you think. I'd like to go there again someday and see if I can find anything, but maybe it's best I don't. About two years ago, my husband and I took our five kids to a water theme park in Idaho. We live in Washington State. We borrowed my dad's trailer and truck and thought it would be less expensive and more fun if we camped at a campground down the road rather than the one made for the park. I've driven through Idaho before, and so has my husband, but we've never stayed there before. To preface my experience, I have had nightmares on occasion where I felt like something was trying to possess me. I always end up reciting the Lord's Prayer or yelling or something. I'll be honest, sometimes it takes a couple of tries and I always have my husband wake me up because I'm screaming. I regularly pray for protection, wear protective crystals, and ask my guardians for protection also. I feel as though because I regularly research and read into the paranormal, it's best to take precautions. So here we are at this campground. The first night, everything was great. Nothing happened. The next day, we take the kids to the park, spend all day there, and come back to cook dinner and get ready for bed. I also must say, while I have read a lot about sleep paralysis, I have never experienced it until this night, and I have not since. Once we were all in bed, I started to fall asleep. While asleep, I feel awake. I can see the trailer around me and kind of what felt like a blur, but I'm unable to shout or scream or move. I look to the end of my bed and see what looks like a short, four foot tall or so demon-like thing. It has horns and it's difficult to make out its face and it's terrifying. All of a sudden, I feel my husband grab my arm and I'm awake. He says, you were screaming, are you okay? I told him I was fine and tried to go back to sleep, but the same thing happened again, except this time the demon was closer to me. I remember shouting in my head, Jesus is my savior, go away, but he wouldn't. I remember trying to scream for my husband, but I couldn't. Then once again, my husband grabs my arm and wakes me up, saying I'm still screaming. At this point, I still told him I was fine. I attempted to sleep once more, and the same thing happened again and again, and every time, the demon thing was even closer. No matter what I tried, he wouldn't leave, and again, my husband would wake me up. Eventually, I told him what was going on. He said he was sorry. This time, I didn't try to fall back asleep. I wrapped as much of him as I could around me and desperately tried not to sleep. I felt like something was trying to pull me towards sleep, but I fought it. Next thing I know, I woke up the next morning and told my husband the entire story. I have never researched the area. I can't remember the name of the campground. Because I was so terrified, I haven't really shared this story until recently.
This happened to me a while back when I decided to go on another camping trip alone. I always liked camping alone. There's something serene and sobering about being isolated in the middle of the wilderness, and I always found it relaxing. So I planned out what trail I was going to take and packed my camping gear and my rifle for protection, and I jumped in my truck. I get to this trail early in the morning and I hike for about 15 to 20 miles until I find the right spot and I head off the trail to find a place to put up my tent. I stumble upon this nice sized clearing and decide that it's a nice beautiful spot to settle down. I am exhausted at this point, but I set up the tent at the southernmost edge of the clearing next to the tree line and I manage to get a fire going. I roast some hot dogs and start to hear a sound in the distance underneath all the forest noise. It sounded like an animal, most likely a deer, with a lame leg as it sounded like the animal was making a walking, dragging noise. I felt bad for the poor guy, but it was too far away and it was getting dark, so I couldn't really go find it and put it out of its misery. I think nothing of it after that and I go back to eating my food. After I eat, I douse the fire and crawl into my tent and get into my sleeping bag. I decide that even at my exhausted and relaxed state, I can't go to sleep yet, so I pull out a book I brought with me and I start to read by the light of the lamp. Hours go by and I hear that sound again, this time closer, right at the opposite side of the clearing. Surprised, I put my book down, and I listen to this animal walk-drag across the clearing toward my tent. It's really loud at this point, and it now sounds like the hooves are all being heavily planted with the dragging noise following seconds after, almost like the deer is dragging something along. It makes it to about what I assume is the middle of the clearing, and stops, and I hear nothing. No breathing, I mean not a sound from this animal. I unzip the tent and I look into the clearing. There's nothing but trees and darkness. What the hell? Unnerved at this point, I zip up the tent and sit there listening for other noises. Nothing. Just the crickets and the breeze. I decide that there are a lot of strange noises in the woods and I tried not to let it bother me. Besides, I had my rifle. I start to doze off when I hear men's laughter off in the distance to my right, then women's laughter, and then sticks snapping far off to my left. I'm up now, wondering if what I'm really hearing is what I'm really hearing, or if it's just a product of being half asleep. I hear more faint laughing from a couple of other directions, all different. Old men, old women, younger people, even children. And I confirm that it's real. The noises are closing in, and I grab my rifle, preparing to fire a warning shot off into the air in case they came too close. Something about this laughter, how far in I was, the noise earlier, and the time of night, told me that this was not just another family strolling through. I was on edge enough already, but then I noticed that the nightlife was dead quiet. Not even the wind was making any noise. I decided enough was enough. I unzipped the tent and fired a shot into the night. I sat there and surveyed the tree line and saw nothing. I listened intensely to my surroundings. No laughing and the forest sounds had returned. Relaxing just a little bit and figuring that I scared off whoever it was, I sat down and in my exhausted state, I fell asleep. I wake up later in a cold sweat racked with anxiety, and it was still dark outside. I immediately hear two people whispering not far from my tent. Alert, I grab my rifle and I listen to what they're saying. I can't make out much, but I hear something about being lost. So I shout, hey, who's there? The voices fall silent. I shout again, are you guys lost? Who's there? Suddenly a huge burst of flame like a flamethrower erupted from the middle of the clearing, illuminating several silhouettes of people just standing around. In shock, I fire my rifle, blowing a hole in the front of my tent, and it goes dark. Without checking my surroundings, I get up and sprint out of my tent, making a hard left back to where the trail was. 
I hiked until sunrise back to my truck with my head over my shoulder the whole way. I never heard anyone follow me. I never saw anyone or anything the whole way out. But I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. After that, my enjoyment of camping alone left me, just like I left all my gear in the woods that night. This happened at a school camp when I was about 11 years old. Our school camp was scheduled to be at a campground about two and a half to three hours away. I remember talking to people about the camp and where I was going, and one of my friends who was a year older told me that they saw something like a pair of eyes when they were down at the creek one night. Skip ahead, I can't exactly remember what night this was of the five day camp, but I remember exactly what happened and I always will. We were sitting with the other students and we had just finished eating, meaning it was time to play games and to calm all the kids down. My friend Savannah told me that she needed to go down to our tent and change clothes and asked if I would come with her. I said that I would and one of the teachers said that I could go with her. Keep in mind the tents were way away from the rest of camp and it was actually a walk to get to them as it was a huge campground. So we got a torch and walked down to the tents. We got in and left our tent window open for light as it would have been awkward to have the torch on. Stupid, I know, but we were young. We turned around and I started changing too. Then something very bright caught my attention. I looked at the window and there were flashing bright lights everywhere and I swear there was no way it could have been a camera because there were tons at the window moving so fast. I quickly spun around and in like one second, they were at the door, then vanished. I quickly said to my friend, what was that? And we totally freaked out. We quickly finished getting changed and hurried back to our class and teachers where the teacher had just talked to the class we had to explain what happened to the teachers. It seems like just a sicko taking photos when you hear the story, but I promise that I know it wasn't a camera. You can take my word for that. There was no way, and I've been around cameras modeling and stuff, so I know what all the camera flashes are like. I don't know what I saw that night, and I don't think I ever will, but I know that I will remember that night for the rest of my life. This is my story of a dude I happened to come across in the deep woods in Florida. This was in Ocala National Forest. I probably came across either a poacher's camp or a drug operation, and they put signs up to scare people away. In any case, my friend and I were hunting and stayed out past midnight looking for hogs. We realized we were way deeper into the woods than we had planned on being, and we began to walk out. We were probably three or four miles into the woods, off the main road. We were walking in the dark, heavily armed with AR-15s, sidearms, and fixed blade hunting knives in a hip sheath. So we really weren't afraid of anything. Plus, the moon was bright enough to navigate by, even under the trees. We had lights mounted on our rifles, and I had a large, powerful flashlight in my hand that I could make into a strobe or use as a club. The point is, we weren't paranoid of anything. We felt very prepared. We were heading back and we started to hear something hauling through the woods on our right. It was about to cross the trail in front of us. Most trails are old logging roads. They're pretty wide and they make square quadrants out of the forest. This particular trail cut across one of the quadrants and was overgrown and thin. We thought it was a deer or maybe a black bear. Either way, we couldn't shoot it at night. So instead of using the rifle lights, I used my handheld light. We waited until we heard it get near the trail, and then I turned my light on. 
All we saw was a pair of white legs cross the thin trail about 50 feet in front of us. They looked human. We were a little baffled. Like, what moron goes crashing through the deep woods at 1 a.m. in shorts and through the thick brush, not the trail? Super weird. But again, and armed as we were for hogs, we pushed on because it would have taken like 30 minutes extra to turn back and go around the quadrant. We hear crashing now and then in the woods, but it never got close to us again. Finally, we reached my car, and I was relieved that it was still there and not broken into. We keep the rifles loaded, shove our handguns between the seat and the center console, and get into the front seat. I begin to drive out of the forest with my moonroof open, and the stars were just gorgeous. It's easy to forget how amazing the night sky is in the middle of Ocala. About half a mile down the road, my headlights fall onto a man in a checkered button-down shirt and shorts, just walking along the road. We're miles from any paved road, and then it's another five to ten miles on the paved road to get to a town. Also, this is in the northern part of the forest, where there are no old cabins that were built before it was declared a national park. This dude had no backpack or anything. Was this what we saw across the path? If so, what was he doing walking out here at 1.30 to 2 in the morning with no supplies, no flashlight, nothing? He didn't even look at us as we passed. Anyway, as we got near the paved road, we unloaded the rifles and put them in the trunk and went home. It was a really fun trip, and I can't wait to go back, but I will always be armed in Ocala. Something seriously weird is going on out there. I have been backpacking and camping, mostly solo as an adult, for the majority of my life. I'm cautious about my surroundings, and I listen carefully when I'm out. I try to remain an observer and move through the land with as little impact as possible. I'm also very interested in the mysterious and the obscure. Cryptids, alternate realities, and the unexplained fascinate me. I've read most of the missing 411 cases, and I'm a serious devotee of true crime. All of the morbid and curious things I can find, I devour. Anything strange that will fire the imagination. There have been occasions where I have felt slightly uncomfortable, or watched even, when I've been out in the woods. But mostly, I've just chalked it up to being alone and alert. Maybe my inherent skepticism makes me less susceptible to encounters that other people experience. I always look for logical conclusions first. I even think that David Politis is experiencing some kind of confirmation bias. I don't know that all the missing 411 cases are what he thinks they are. I've never encountered any truly off or deranged people out in the forests, but I do consider that the biggest threat is the human animal. A few years ago, I set out to camp near an old growth forest in North Georgia. Most old growth here is gone, but there are places that haven't been logged. And if you get the chance to visit one, wherever you might live, I would suggest it. It's beautiful, serene, and alive in a way that's hard to describe. This particular forest was one of hemlock and poplar, and the trees were massive. I had a guidebook that gave directions out into the sticks following little country roads that eventually turned into gravel. After a long drive into a national forest, I parked near the trail, which was unmaintained, meaning it wasn't very popular or highly traveled. I hiked out through the woods to where the trail eventually just kind of stopped. There was very little undergrowth. I spent the afternoon just exploring, I was looking at the trees and enjoying the calm. Eventually, I made my way down to a creek and crossed over it to an old field that formed a sort of bowl in the land, with hills and ridges on all sides. The fact that there was a field means that there had, I guessed at one point, been people living in that area, but I saw nothing of the sort when I was there, 
and my map showed that I should have been far from any roads or settlements. I set up my tent and made some food. It was late when I decided to have a little smoke and lay out in the field in front of my tent and just look at the stars before bed. There was little to no light pollution, and I always relished the opportunity to enjoy the sky at times like those. As I was laying there, I began hearing a loud knocking sound from up near the ridge where I'd been earlier in the day, maybe a thousand yards away. Three knocks and a long pause, followed by three more, and then it would repeat. When I say knocks, what I mean is a very loud noise, like two logs or trees being hit together, loud enough to reverberate in the little bowl that I was in, loud enough that you could almost feel it. I could pinpoint where the sound was coming from, but it was night in the forest and anyone who's been out there knows that it is dark. I thought it had to be a person making the noise because what else would make such a rhythmic sound? It was extremely loud and would have taken considerable effort to produce. I had seen no one else at all that day and the direction from which the sound was coming was the section of old growth that I had explored earlier. And that's it. That's the story. Eventually the sound stopped and I went to bed feeling like I had heard something that I wasn't meant to hear, or maybe that I'd heard something specifically meant for me and me alone. Both disturbed me. I packed up and hiked out the next day. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't hyper aware and waiting for something else to happen but nothing ever did. I've told friends about this and they'll either say that it was for sure a Sasquatch or that I was for sure close to someone's house that I didn't know about. But why would a person be out in the woods late at night, banging logs together in the dark? I'm not ready to come to a conclusion. Like I said, I'm a skeptic, but I'll admit that I have no idea how to explain what I heard that night. A few years ago, my mom and I decided to take a road trip. We were going to different camping and hiking spots along the California coast, and we were in the Big Sur area at the time of this particular incident. It was getting to be later in the day, so we had kind of been scrambling to find a campsite to sleep at. I can't remember the exact details, but for some reason, we ended up going up this long, windy mountain road that seemed to go on forever. Eventually, at the top, we found a secluded site with camp spots and even a bathroom. We didn't see anybody around, but the sun was about to set, so we figured we could find the person in charge in the morning and pay them then. By now, it was dark, and we had been around the fire for a few hours. Our site was right at the edge of the trees. I heard some rustling coming from that direction and I looked up. Two people were walking, one in front of the other, dressed completely in white, in perfectly clean clothing. The person in front had their arm back to hold the other's hand, but they both looked straight ahead, never acknowledged my mom or I whatsoever, and then walked out of the woods, past us, and right back into the trees. What's weird is that neither of them had lights. They were barefoot. They had no belongings with them, and they weren't even dressed warmly. It was probably around 40 degrees, pitch dark, and rough terrain. Not to mention the gut-wrenching, heart-dropping feeling I got when I saw them. I asked my mom if she saw that, and she said no, even though she was facing the same direction as I was. She could never see them. I was on edge the rest of the night, and I had a lot of trouble sleeping. In the morning, my mom found the camp owner, paid him, and told him what I had seen. He replied nonchalantly, Oh yeah, those are the night walkers. People see them around here sometimes. When she asked him if he thought this was paranormal, 
He just looked at her and said, pretty damn sure. We got the hell out of there as soon as we could. I took my super skeptic boyfriend on our first camping trip up to the Mount Adams area because I'd heard of some spooky UFO action in the area. We hadn't been dating that long. We saw some UFO action that defied his skeptic explanations in a dispersed spot, but nothing I hadn't seen before. Lights appearing out of nowhere, zipping along and then disappearing, lights appearing and joining up and then disappearing, stuff like that. It was pretty satisfying to hear him say, yeah, I have no idea what that was. A few months later, we were camping with his dad and stepson, who were both longtime veterans in the Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management. We mentioned the spots where we had camped, and his stepdad, who is not a believer of anything like this, said that the area we'd been in had been his beat for years. Without any prompting from us, he said, we were supposed to be up there looking for camp thieves. We never caught any thieves, but we saw a lot of weird stuff in the sky. When I pressed him for details, he got a little cagey, but he did tell a really creepy story about how these big black logging trucks with no lights would appear and steal lumber in the middle of the night. So he and his partner staked out one night to catch them. They were backed into the bush and had to sit in complete silence to let the truck cool down so nobody could detect them with heat or night vision goggles. The back of the truck was deep in the bush, meaning that only the forest was behind them. Then after over an hour of sitting in silence, these huge bright lights appeared behind them from deep within the forest. They were so bright he could see the entire outline of the truck, the antenna, the spotlights, and their silhouettes in the shadow. This was the early 80s, so we're not talking LED lights here. He said that he'd never seen anything like it. Then the lights went out, and everything was silent. No truck noise, no rustling in the forest behind them, nothing. I love the guy, but he has the imagination and personality of a potato, so there's no way he made this up. That's why it was so creepy and believable to me. He had a few other stories, too, that I'd love to get more information on. I, for one, believe him. 